with the GOAT of Raider Nation, the GOAT of the Black Hole Violator. All goes down next right here on Raider Nation News Today. gentlemen welcome to the house at hammer built by the nation for the nation welcome to raider nation news today another special edition of vault talk those coming on in y'all know the routine those new here do not let it be your last time in here break them thumbs hammer them subs and smash the bell to stay up to date with all your raiders news rumors updates live streams and reactions we are bringing them in super fan in canton Super fan and the goat to the Raider Nation and the black hole. Without any further ado, let's welcome in Unk. Violator is in the building. What is up? Thanks. House. It's been a minute. It's been around this year, around this time, two years ago was the last time that you had joined us live and in living color on camera when I was just starting up. I really appreciate you being on back. You know, we got to hang out for a little bit at uh, that last game at a Legion against the Broncos. Let's, uh, let's talk about that a little bit first and uh, the energy that was inside a Legion and how it made you feel, especially when it came to the chance of AP at the end of that game. Yeah, listen, uh, just going back to that game in particular, man, it, it, my spirit let itself go back to the Oakland days. That's where I felt like I was. Uh, it was just a different energy, a little more edgy energy that day. And it, it, like I say, around the parking lot, you could hear whispers, man. That was that crowd getting that energy that it once had being united. And it was magical once we got inside. And they, they rocked it, man. So, like I said, and we got to hang out briefly, but always a pleasure, man. Listen, like you say, it's been two years. Shows you how fast it's going. If you don't keep up, you get left. Absolutely. Oh, like I said, like, it could be five minutes. It could be an hour, hour and a half. Like, no matter what, like, I always make a point when I'm out there that we have to link up, like, I call you Unk, and I call you Unk for a reason. To me, you truly are family. Like, I love you to death. I appreciate everything that you've done for the nation. And, um, again, it's all it's always all love, always. Like, it doesn't matter where we're at. Like, we could be at a a black uh, black hole party. I'm like, yo, where is he? Where's Unk? Or I just pop up like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, life has a way of bringing us together at the right time. That's the way I tend to look at my journey it's always the right time. So you're always preparing yourself for what might come. So when it comes, there's no shock to you at all. You're walking in doors, opportunities that present themselves because you've been doing the wood. You've been in the woodshed the whole time. So that's kind of like how I roll. You don't see me. I'm busy doing something. Uh, shout out to Nick in the chat. Grew up seeing this guy at the Coliseum in Oakland. This is awesome. Appreciate you being in the chat. And to everybody in here, man, spread the word. Uh, obviously, we don't have the regular uh, background that we normally have, but we are 170 away from 8K, y'all. A huge milestone, a very significant number to me. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Moving on, um, look, we've had a lot of moving around within this last week. Exactly a week ago today, Antonio Pierce was hired as our head coach. What are your thoughts and feelings about this? And uh, what does this mean for the Raiders moving forward? Me personally, and I know there's others who echo the same sentiment. We've got our guy. Uh, that's the way I felt. Uh, 
was leaning towards having Champ in there beside him, but Champ is still in there just at a different position. But I think together that chemistry that we see from these guys in a short period of time. Now, I'm throwing Tom Telesco's name in that group because now he is the GM. And his track record, if you go back and study players, personnel, is not half bad with what he did uh, with the Chargers. So I, I think with that trio there and they get that, uh, what do you call it, synergism going, we already know who we are and we're ready to stomp the yard with them. I'm here for it. Like when we got the news about Telesco the other day, I was at work and got a couple of different notifications, got some phone calls from some people. And I was like, uh, I'm not too sure how to feel about this. So I reached out to a good friend of mine. Shout out to Jake. He covers the Chargers on his YouTube channel. Salute to him. Um, we had a nice little conversation on the drive home. And I'm like, dude, uh, you just convinced me to step back from the ledge. I'm going to call you during my live. And I want you to talk to the rest of the nation. And for a lot of people, it definitely calmed a lot of people down. Um, it put people a little bit more at ease and gave them more of a understanding in regards to why we made this move, why this hire made sense. And everything he did say made complete sense. And I, I talked about the experience that he had um, for almost 30 years in the league. And he worked his way up from being an intern while he was in college to going up through the rankings, through uh, scouting and player personnel to being a GM for 10 years. And again, like you mentioned, like made some very solid draft picks I don't care what rounds they were in because people are like, well, he did great with the first and second round picks, but what about the rest? You still have drafted some guys that are pro bowlers, some guys that are at the top of their game right now, and that's something you can't shy away from. Now, there's reports out there now with Harbaugh that, yes, for those that don't know, for those that are under a rock, he did become the new head coach for the Chargers. But apparently the NFL might be suspending him a couple of games due to these infractions within the NCAA. I'm not sure how that could even happen, but there's reports out there as of right now, and I'm not creating clickbait. These are some things that I saw earlier today. There's a chance he may end up serving a suspension um, in the near future, so we shall see. And at this point in time, we know that we're still looking for an offensive coordinator. Uh, a couple of reports are out there today that um, – Luke Getze was scheduled to be interviewed today. Cliff Kingsbury was slated to be interviewed. You guys heard me yesterday in the quick hit that uh, Mike Sullivan, the former interim offensive coordinator, um, he was a successor to Matt Canada after Matt Canada was fired by the Steelers. He was being interviewed. And um, it's just all over the place right now. Uh, realistically, Offensive wise, who would you like to see as our next offensive coordinator? Wow. Uh, out of those candidates, uh, Hammer, Kingsbury stands out to me because of what has been said or spoken or written in the media about us being a more aggressive offense. And 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 us as Raider fans, we're all for that. You know, we we know that we have a pretty good ground game, but it's going to take addressing that offensive line and what quarterback we eventually end up with. You know we're going to get one. Eventually, who is the guy that we go out and get that's going to represent us for 10, 15 years? I'm hoping Jaden Daniels. I really am. Um, we have to see what type of moves are going to be made in regards to Telesco now. Like They're going to have, they're going to have these conversations, obviously. But I also think that right now, the, the first priority before quarterback is trying to figure out who is that offensive coordinator and out of this draft class, potentially, because I really don't see us trying to go for any of these guys in free agency. Fields might still be an option, but I'm not sure right now, especially with Raheem Morris now being the new head coach in Atlanta. There's a chance that they could try to make a move and try to get Justin Fields in Atlanta still. But I am more concerned who's the offensive coordinator going to be first and foremost, because depending on what that offensive coordinator's uh, scheme is, that's going to determine which quarterback, especially if it's one we get at, out of this draft, which quarterback is going to be the one that perfectly fits this system and will be a quarterback that we look as the face of the franchise for years to come. 
you, you know, you know, this was a little bit different too, Hammer, because now you've got uh, our fan base who has paid more attention lately to media or the news or what have you, even though there's still what I call a almost a panic button built in. And that's because there's two generations there who've never seen this team really accomplish winning. So they don't know what that feels like. Now us OGs, we've seen it three times yep. and almost a fourth, but we know the grit that this team was formed under and what I think Coach AP is going to bring back. You saw a small sampling of it the end of the season. Had had other moves been made earlier, we probably would be in the playoffs ourselves. So Raider Nation stand pat in that belief. That's what's going to get us through these rough waters. Now you see some moving pieces. That's the beautiful part when you start to slow the pieces down as they connect together. Because they're painting a the picture just like you hear me talk about all the time. Yep. Look, like this energy that AP brought into this organization once he took over his interim, obviously we had seen the change of the guard when he took over. Again, this defense was top ranked in various categories the last nine weeks of the season. We beat, we finished with a record the last couple of games anyways. We finished with AP as our head coach, three and one, three and one in our division. Realistically, yeah, there's a couple of games we wish we could have gotten back because wild card, and I think this is going to be a thing moving forward, uh, depending on how the the shift of the league is and the advancements in offenses now. But realistically, to be a wild card team now, ten and seven is going to get you it. But eleven and six is going to be eleven and six and beyond is really going to be what punches your ticket into the playoffs and. I think with this defense, we know Patrick Graham right now is back. The Seahawks and Commanders are still looking for head coaches, but apparently they're not going to come to a final decision on those uh, those spots until after the conclusion of the conference championship games this coming weekend. But I still think that Patrick Graham remains here. Obviously, we still have Champ in the building. Champ is going to be the assistant GM, which is a great move for us still. He still is going to have some type of input. He will have his insight. You have Patrick um, – I'm sorry, not Patrick. Uh, you have Richard Seymour um, now as an advisor. Tom Coughlin is in the building. Marvin Lewis is in the building. Between those two guys alone, you have over 100 years worth of NFL experience. These guys have really solid minds, and I think that they're going to be the guys that AP can lean on at times when he needs some type of – when he needs to get a little bit of assistance or – work on something that maybe he's not doing such a great job at as the head coach right now for us, but time will tell again, this isn't a rebuild. Clearly we have our head coach where we didn't steer away from that. We didn't take one of these other guys. Yes, we have a new GM, but this is a retool. We're not going to have these guys arguing back and forth on what they want, what this guy wants, what that guy wants. I think a lot of things are going to come down to making conscious football decisions, smart, conscious football decisions moving forward. Shout out to DC Raider on $10 Super. There's news that Mike Sullivan is interviewing for quarterbacks coach. My co-worker is a Steelers fan, and we talk smack all the time. He says Sullivan can go as he hasn't done anything for the Steelers. The thing is, Sullivan also has ties to Tom Coughlin, as he was on that coaching staff with Tom Coughlin and the New York football giants. And This was at the same time that Antonio Pierce was a linebacker, um, was a captain of the defense during that period of time as well. If this is a guy that they think can help develop a quarterback, then I'll trust in, what did I used to call him, old man Coughlin? I'll, I'll trust in Coughlin to make the, the right decision if they feel that it's going to work best for whoever our quarterback is going to be moving forward. But appreciate you on the Super Chat. Salute to LV Maximus. The official security of Mount Shieldmore. Salute to you, my guy. Um, missing anything here? You got now Marv, AP, Marvin, Telesco. I'm good with it. Shout out to Robert DeVille in the chat. We got AP. I was not down with it, but what I heard is he's a player's coach, and it's hard to find that as the Seahawks in the pads. And that's the thing. Um 
you want a guy, and we we saw it. We saw the pressers. We saw the post game with him in the locker room talking to the guys. He's a leader of men, and these guys are feeding off of his energy as well. They're having fun again, doing something that they love, getting paid millions of dollars to do it, but they're having fun again. And when it comes to playing any type of competitive sport, the main thing is you want to have fun. You want to win, obviously, but you want to have fun doing it. And it's clear as day that this was this was the breath of fresh air that we needed in this building. Violator, what do you think of Josh Jacobs? Is Josh Jacobs going to be back here? Uh, I personally, I love Josh. That he is that type of Raiders running back of old, and you can go how many decades you want to go back. He represents that grit, that toughness, and he's a humble guy on top of that. And he's a leader in his own right. But due to his possible free agency, he may have, if he hits the market, I don't think he comes back. This that's the first time I'm hearing that from anyone. And I do believe like the market value now, I think it's it's dropped. It, yes. Like the running back position has been depreciated terribly. I've talked about this when it comes to Christian McCaffrey and his contract, like he is definitely the last of the Mohicans. We're not going to see another running back make the type of money that Christian McCaffrey is going to make. But at the same time, like AP has said it time and time and time and time again, that Jacobs is the heart of the offense. Now the contract disputes this past off season, him not showing up to camp until late. Definitely. I think played a little part in him having the down year that he had right. at the same time, like, Ziggler and McDaniels play a part in that as well. And if anybody feels any feels the opposite way, I don't know what to tell you, but the dude led the league in rushing. He played his ass off for you guys, even when you started him in the Hall of Fame game and that started questions right away. Oh, is he going to get traded? He's going to go here. He's going to go there. And then the first four games of the season, he was hardly utilized. And then all of a sudden, week five and beyond, over 1,600 yards rushing. This guy realistically probably could have been a 2,000 yard rusher had they utilized him those first four games of the season. He didn't pick up his fifth year option. So it was like this was a guy that you just didn't want here. And I, I do think that he could come back ballpark wise, I want to say an average annual of like 10 to 10 and a half at the max. Look, tax free, it shouldn't be that bad. And I don't see why he wouldn't want to take a home team discount for AP and the rest of the guys that had his back as well, even when he was holding out uh, for the time of period, the period of time that he did. What do you think? Yeah, they, they definitely had his back. And I want to piggyback on what we talked about earlier, what I'm seeing and what I hope most of the nation can see or can visualize is we've got a bunch of guys who want to really finish what they started. You know, they've got like the short end of the stick you know, they got, you know, lemons and they made lemonade out of it. So we have to look at big picture. You know, like I was saying earlier, we have almost a built-in panic button or uh, I'm calling it panic button, but it's a negative vibe. Right. And we all know that positive vibes, man, can, can brighten up the darkest room. So, you know, I'm hearing conversations like when we run into each other with some of these fans and every little thing that goes – Opposite what they felt, it's the sky's falling. No, it's not. We're building foundation here for the next three or four decades. You know, I probably won't be around, but I'm hoping you guys have enough insight to be patient, to be loyal, to be dedicated, to be poised, because we are Raider fans. The one crazy thing is like thinking about this, like, and I just had a conversation with somebody at work today about this, like, when it comes to our fans, and this is no disrespect, it's just calling it as I see it, can never satisfy the masses. Like, they make a decision. They make some type of decision. Why did they do that? What is going on? Oh, this team sucks again. We're going to be in hell for the next the next X amount of years. So like, be patient and let it run its course. You guys will never, ever hear me say <laughs> TT, <laughs> TTP which for those that don't know, it's trust the process. Yeah, trust this ain't a Philadelphia sports team. This ain't a team that tanks. 
Trust the office. And right now, I do think we have not had an experienced GM in our position, in our headquarters, in a very, very, very long time. This guy has the experience. He has the credentials. And I think having that guy with the experience was what made sense moving forward for us to make the right, smart, conscious football decisions this coming off season and for how many, however many years that he's going to be with us. And people need to start looking at it that way and stop with the ready to jump off the ship. Right. Oh, I'm done with this team. I'm not watching them this season. Bah, 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 bah. Like that's got to stop, man. You're you're either with us or you're against us. But there's no having your foot halfway in and halfway out. I'm over it. I'm over it. Like people really need to wake up. If this is your team, be loyal and be supportive of your team. If not, don't let the door hit you because I'm not doing this halfway in, halfway out with people anymore. You guys have watched me long enough to know that I will call players out when they're messing up, but when they're doing good, they're going to get their credit where credit's due as well. I've never been a fair weather fan, and I never will be. Uh, say it at the end of every single show. Win, lose, or tie, Raider Nation till I die, and I mean that with every ounce of my body. Absolutely. It's all about that shield, baby. If that don't move you, guys like yourself, me, spitting these seeds out there, and that's what I keep – they hear me say this for years, plant the seeds. Be careful what you put out there. Once you eject this seed from your, from your being, now you've given it life. Yep. You don't know. It could be some young fan who could be the next up-and-coming star, but you, you, you're tainting his mind with, oh, I don't really want to follow that team because they say that team sucks. Always build that shield up, man. The business part of it, yes, we go at it like redheaded junkyard dogs or whatever. But at the end of the day, that shield, as long as that shield isn't fractured, we're in good shape to keep going to battle. And that's what being a Raider fan is about. Year after year, people talk about you and people can put us down. They try to, but we have to let them put us down. You have to have that pride of that shield that your light shining blinded them. And for the most part, from what my, I've been hearing, that's the way the other fan bases look at us. Like we're the Mount Everest and they're trying to achieve this. So don't take this lifestyle for granted. But it, like Coach said, it ain't for everybody. That's a fact. Shout out to GA Patriot on the 999. AP is smart enough to know what he doesn't know. His ego isn't so big that he can't be taught. And he's bringing in his own people to coach the coach. Salute, Wayne. Welcome to Hammer's House. GA, this is a welcome back. Again, he was live exactly two years ago around this time. It was my birthday weekend, and we had a whole round table with some other guests. And uh, he did call in a couple of months back while we while we were doing a show. But he he already knows, like, and I said it uh, earlier in the show, like, Unc, you are, you're truly family to me. Love you to death. And anytime you ever want to come on and chop it up, you know you're more than welcome. So... <laughs> Uh, we got another super chat. Shout out to Hug D's, man. Four ninety nine, my guy Violator. I met you at the second to last home game in Oakland against the Titans. I gave you the commemorative pin they gave us. All love. Shout out to Hug D's, one of the most loyal supporters um, of this channel, guys. For those that are in here, we have over two hundred and nine in here, um, and I think that is on YouTube. We are doing a, a multicast on other platforms, but those that are on the other platforms, come on over to YouTube, Raider Nation News Today. Hit that subscribe button. For those that are in the chat right now that are not subscribed on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We are getting closer and closer to 8K. I'll tell you right now, that would be the best birthday present that you guys could give me, and it would mean the world to me that Raider Nation continues to grind and support me as much as you guys do. So again, thank you guys. This has been a whirlwind of a week. We hit... Uh, what did we hit? We hit 7,500. Um, I think it was like 10 days ago, something like that. Turn around twice. We're already over 7,800. So I appreciate each and every single one of y'all. Um, trying to think because I had something on my mind before to ask, and now it's kind of hitting me. Um, 
if you guys have questions in the chat, feel free to ask. And if you're open to it, we could even open up the, the phone lines and take some calls if you're down for that for a little bit, too. Sure. Where is that thing? <clears throat> Make sure it goes through. You know what I always say, brother? You make the most of your opportunities because you can't go and reverse them. Let's play them over. What are you looking forward like? What are you looking forward to right now uh, as it pertains to the free agency period? And is there anybody that's really caught your eye that you think like we all know with the change of the guard now and AP is our full time head coach now? Like, do you think that this is a destination for free agents? I, I think it's going to be the destination for a certain type of player. Right. And they, they already know who they are. They just got the call now that this is a place to go to finish out strong and to finish, you know, not just there for a paycheck, but, you know, helping this team come from the bottom, basically as we've been for the last 20 plus years, come to that top again. So these youngsters we spoke of can witness that in their lifetime. And then that, that Raiders cry will get even stronger because now they know what we've been feeling like all these years. Shout out to Nation's Finest. He's got a question for you. How do you feel between having a pocket passer and a mobile quarterback? Me personally, I would love a combination of the, the two uh, in this day and age, especially. Uh, the defenses have gotten faster, more complex. So if you've got a quarterback who cannot get off his diamond, so to speak, he's a sitting duck. There you go. Let me put this up on the screen for you guys. Give me two seconds. Sorry for the dead air. You know I hate doing that to you guys. Three, four, seven. Oops. If it actually wants to show up on the screen. All right. There you guys have it. Vault line. You guys want to call in and ask your questions, sound off. Like You guys know the show is always about you guys. Call on in and get your questions for myself or the GOAT. 347-471-0361. Shout out to Thunder on the $1. Super. Much appreciated to you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what if O'Connell beats out the quarterback we bring in? Well, look, if it's a QB competition at camp and he wins it out, then obviously we let whoever uh, we did draft that maybe isn't exactly ready yet, we let them learn. We let them learn behind AOC if that happens. Raider Nation News today. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hug D. What's up, bro? Sound off. What's going on, man? Hey, nice to nice to talk to you again, Violator. Like I said, I met you in that second to last Oakland game. Uh, memorable experience for me. So if you look at my uh, my profile picture, it's actually you and I at that game. Memories, bro. Uh, couple, <laughs> couple things. I think. Uh, the AP hire is definitely what needed to happen. Beautiful thing. Um, I'm pumped and ready to run through walls based on his initial interview that he did with uh, with Tom Telesco. I like what Tom Telesco has done in previous drafts. I like who he's helped kind of bring into the systems that he's ran. I'm, uh, I like the safeties and the DB coach hires. I think those are both excellent hires. I'm really just, I'm worried about this OC position. I think, uh, I think our uh, defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham's obviously, I think it's been reported he's staying. So that's a beautiful thing. Yep. I'm yes. hoping we get a couple defensive tackles in the draft, but mostly I'm hoping we find ourselves our quarterback and we find ourselves a little bit more offensive trench help. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on those things? Trench help definitely on the <laughs> offensive side. Defensively, I've talked about this when it comes to our interior D-line. I do want to go for one of those top four guys, um, one of the top four defensive tackles in free agency, whether it being Chris Jones, Leonard Williams, Christian Wilkins, or uh, uh, I can never get the name right, so I'm just going to say M from uh, from Baltimore. I always, always forget it, and it's no disrespect to him. And then offensively, um, the kid hunt from Miami at right guard, because obviously we don't see Van Roten getting back here. I see us potentially drafting a yeah. center and keeping Parham at left guard. Sky's the limit, man. Sky's the limit. Like yeah. again, th this, got, this could definitely be a destination. Go ahead. 
What'd you say? We got Dalton Wagner too. Yeah. We got Dalton Wagner too. Well, we get through we happen. get through training camp. We get through training camp and see what Wagner's capable of doing, especially through the preseason. And if the opportunity presents itself, then maybe he'll be on that um uh, on that opening day roster. We'll see. What are your thoughts, Violator? Well, definitely, like you said, trenches, offense and defensively. Uh, I think the linebacker position was improved from what it was, but we still need another stud back there. And uh, I think we, we're clicking on, be clicking on all cylinders because if you see our safeties, uh, Merrick, this is to me, this last season was his make or break season and he improved his play. So yep. I don't know what is brought into that building, but the right juice is in there now. Anybody that we add, I think they're going to vet them enough to where they know they're coming with that mentality. Let's get busy. And that's, what, that's, what, that's what the fans have been waiting on, just something to be proud to cheer about. Yep. John, you got anything else for us? No, nah, man, just always appreciate your show. Super excited you got Violator on, man. He's a he's definitely an icon in the black hole. So Absolutely. good to talk to you again, Violator, and appreciate your time on the show, man. Appreciate All you. All love, brother. All love, baby. You know. John, take care, bro. Yep. Later. All right. So I did see a question that I wanted to ask you real quick. One of these guys asked in the chat. Um, where the hell did it go? Where did it go? Oh, here we go. Shout out to Raider Ron. Violator opponents for 2024 set. What game are you looking forward to next season? Um, we have at home anyways, our division rivals. You know how that goes. We have the Browns, the Falcons, the Panthers, the Steelers, and the Jaguars. The away games, division opponents uh, as well. The Bengals, the Bucks, the Ravens, the Saints, the Dolphins, and the Rams. Well, you know the Rams would be another home game for us. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to going to New Orleans. Uh, never been there for a game, so that'll be, you know, what I'm getting my cherry pop. So even at my age, man, you can still get your cherries pop. So those two games in particular, uh, I know a lot of people on the Rams uh, fan base, so it's always like that fellowship that we always talk about when you get to chop it up with these cats, even in the midst of battle. That's the beauty of football. I'm trying to, I'm thinking about it now. And I, like, I've already been asked what games am I going to? I have to really wait for the schedule to be released to ultimately make a decision on that. But, um, Baltimore, Baltimore, because Baltimore is only a few hour drive for me. I'm going to, I obviously have to be back home at Vegas for at least one game, maybe the home opener again. Um, the Rams is another one. I have, um, an aunt that's a season ticket holder, so I can go and spend a weekend out there or whatever. And I'm thinking going back to my old stomping grounds at Tampa for uh, the Bucks game. New Orleans is kind of an up in the air one. Um, I have to wait and see how that plays out and see when that is in the season. But I wouldn't. I've never been to New Orleans either. Um, I think it would be a fun little trip out there. Shout out to Pineapple. <clears throat> excuse me on the five dollars. Shout out to Violator Hammer. Thanks for the content. Appreciate you, man. El Maddox said, yes, sir, I live in NOLA. Can't wait for that game. There you go. Raiders versus Saints, it will bring out the Kardashians. That's a fact. That, that'll that be a very interesting, interesting week. But at the same time, like, who's to say that he's even starting there next season? That's true. <laughs> Baltimore is a good game. Hey, Baltimore could be a, a game where we're potentially facing the defending Super Bowl champions. So True. Guys, the vault line is open. If you guys want to ask your questions, let me put it back on the screen for those that haven't seen it yet. 347-471-0361. I did think I see that we got a new subscriber as well. Alex Hubbard, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are at 7836, y'all. 7836, which puts us, I suck at math, 164. 164 away from 8K, y'all. Let's go. Let's run it up. And again, you guys want to call in uh, right now and get your questions? Go ahead. 347-471-0361. Thinking about these conference championship games this weekend, you have the Lions going against the Niners at Santa Clara. You have the Chiefs going to Baltimore to M&T to face Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Who do you have for these matchups? 
Um, my football mind tells me to go with Baltimore at home, Detroit on the road. Wow. I like Baltimore. Definitely. Um, watching that game and calling that game against the Texans last week, like very close game at the start, but I think, uh, Baltimore just needed to get the rust off after having that buy and, Lamar Jackson just did not hold back 24 unanswered points in the second half for them to win 34 to 10. It was a really solid performance by him. And I'll tell you right now, when it comes to the Houston Texans, don't be surprised. This could be a team with what they did this past season. This could be a team that you could hear about either winning a, a division or being in the playoffs consistently for the next couple of years with that uh, front runner for offensive rookie of the year in CJ Stroud. Shout out to my big bro, Graf. Onk. What's up, Graham? Yes, sir. The family is in the building. And then the Lions and the Niners. I'm stunned, but I want to see the Lions do it. Here's the reason I said Baltimore. Uh, you got to look at just what we witnessed from our team. Just that grit. You know, everybody had ridden Lamar Jackson off. Everybody had ridden them off because they didn't have the receiving core. Everybody had written them off because they didn't have a stud running back. And then the defense was getting long in the two. So they went young. Now these guys have grown together, and they brought in some free agencies now. So let's not make slight of that. Those free agents are the captains that's leading the squad on both sides. Lamar is just growing into himself. Yep. And every, you can say what you want about Casey. Yes, they are the defending champions, blah, blah, blah till my tongue falls off, but we kicked their ass Christmas Day. They do bleed. So if it bleeds, you can kill it. And I'm sure the Ravens are looking at them that same way because with, with all the other drama, the, the whole, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the Kelsey drama, Yeah. nobody cares about that. You know, that's keeping them trending. We don't care about that. We're going to be trending because we're going to be stomping on people. I'm all here for it, man. Like with Baltimore and what they've done this season, that defense is just guys like Rokon Smith, Patrick Queen, yeah. like the tight end Isaiah Likely has stepped up in the absence of Mark Andrews and has been that safety blanket for Lamar Jackson. Um, Nelson Aguilar is over there. He's not doing too bad. OBJ is kind of a guy that for $17 million, you'd think he would have done a lot more, but he really hasn't. But Again, Lamar Jackson, again, coming into his own once again. And, um, again, you're looking at a guy that's going to be the two -time, a two-time uh, NFL MVP. So it's a beautiful thing for him, and I definitely hope that they pull this off. I think everybody in the chat wants to see the Ravens and not see the Chiefs in our home attempting to win a Super Bowl. Shout out to Bray Violator. I remember I met you in Oakland when they played KC on Monday night. I was intimidated by you because of the face paint and spikes on your jersey. <laughs> Shout out to Brave. It's all love, baby. All love. I'm just clocked in, man, so I got to get that therapy. Shout out to GA on the 499 Super. We could have had Lamar this year. McDaniels would have made him look like trash. Yeah, you're probably right. Whoever that was that called from the 510 number, try calling in now, and when it rings, I will answer it. I apologize. We got deep in the conversation. That's what happens when – when people click during the podcast, I apologize for that though. Lamar is leaning how to learning how to throw the rock. Yeah. Yeah. But he can still use those legs too, man. And that's the type of quarterback we're going to need moving forward, especially for the next 10, 15 years. Cause we know they like to protect their quarterbacks in this league now. So they do have a little bit longer lifespan than they did once upon a time. Shout out to cool Kev. Shout out to Jerry Stokes. Salute to you guys. What's up hammer. What's up violator. And he's got he came in with the beers for Violator. There you go. There you go. Sure, sure. Let me put it back up on the screen for you guys. Again, if you want to get your questions in, there it is. Call into the Seat Geek Vault line, 347-471-0361. You guys are trying to go to your next concert, your next Raider game. Download the Seat Geek app in the Google Play Store or the Apple iTunes Store, whatever they call that now. Use promo code Hammers House for $20 off of your first purchase. Download the Seat Geek app today. Let me get back into this chat. 
There we go. Raider Nation news today. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what's up, Hammer? This is Dennis. What's going on, man? How are you? Good, good, good. Hey, I was calling. I, 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 I want to say uh, first. I want to say what's up to uh, Navigator. And um, you I was that. interested in hearing your thoughts. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was wanting to hear your thoughts on. Uh, I'm not too keen on giving two first round seconds and thirds for for quarterbacks. Um, I was thinking maybe we should go after. Um, the Chicago quarterback and uh, see where it goes from there. So when it comes to Justin Fields, Justin Fields, um, I mentioned earlier, Belichick is not in Atlanta. Raheem Morris is. Raheem Morris is a defensive-minded coach, but pretty much I think everybody in, in Atlanta knows, everybody in the NFC South knows that Atlanta needs a quarterback. Ritter's not it. So I do think that they might be that team to try to pull the trigger in one way, shape, or form to try to get Justin Fields. If not, um, I think realistically it might take as much as a second round pick to get somebody of the caliber of Justin Fields. Now he's only going to be due $3.2 million this coming season, but then that fifth year option is going to shoot up, I think in excess of 20 plus million. Um, and then we know how this goes. This is a young kid that's still under a rookie contract. Um, after that, if that fifth year option is picked up and he lights it up in that fifth year, you know the value is going to only be higher. So, I don't know. Take it as it goes. We'll see what the possibilities are. If if Telesco and the rest of the Raiders uh, front office decides to try to make that move. Oh, okay. I appreciate it, man. Hey, I, I want to say I met you in uh, Vegas at the blackout. At oh, the okay. time, I didn't know who you were. Oh, but, uh, okay, okay. I, I do, I do now, and uh, I've become a new subscriber. And I, I want to say you're doing a great job, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. Have a good night. You too, man. Take okay. it easy. Yeah, this past trip was 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 kind of trippy. Like I, I met like two or three people. Two of the guys I'm having conversations with. One was in the wind club. The other, I was at a blackjack table, and. Um, Talking about the Raiders, talking about football. I'm like, hey, you watch any of these guys on YouTube? I watch this guy, watch that guy, watch Hammer. I look up, I'm like, what's up? They're like, oh, Mike. It's funny how things work. Oh, yeah. Raider Nation News today. What's your name? Where you calling from? Nation's fine in St. Louis. What's up? What's going on, bro? How are you? Hey, real quick, I'm about to see my daughter. Hey, question for both of y'all. So I know it ain't the, the sexy pick, but if you uh, draft a quarterback late in the rounds, what quarterback shall I like? And how do you feel about taking a flyer on Jordan Travis and sitting there for about a year or two and let him rehab? I'm taking Bo Nix. If one of these other options are not available, like Penix or Jaden Daniels, I would go with Bo Nix. Bo Nix is a guy that I've talked about over. I spoke about him the two years previous. I didn't really get to watch much of him this past season, but – Bo Nix is still a guy that I think could be the face of a franchise, whatever team he goes to. But obviously, I would much prefer him being here. Like, there's not another product uh, out of Oregon who seems to have had a pretty decent career so far, and he's already got his bag, and that's Justin Herbert. Um, I think Bo Nix would be that guy, but I think it would be Bo Nix and then maybe Jordan Travis down the line like he probably might. i think it would be bo nix jj mccarthy and then maybe jordan travis all right the reason why i ask that is because everybody wants to take a quarterback early mm-hmm. i don't yeah i want, I want to fix our team like i'm all down with getting like sweat um uh what's that guy from illinois name um i can't think of right now newton? Um, newton newton or newsome yeah, yeah. In the first round yeah yeah second round Get a cornerback now. It's a cornerback that's going under the radar. Who some people might be going the first round, second round. Cornerback out of Missouri, Rick Stroll. He is a dog to go with Nate with go with Nate Hobbs and uh, Jack Jones. He is a dog. I'm still liking the idea, and I don't know how realistic it's going to be. It depends because um, we have about as a, as it stands right now, we have about 55 million dollars in cap space, and I've talked about trying to address mm-hmm. the defensive interior, but. I would love to take a flyer on uh, Jalen Johnson, the cornerback out of uh, 
from the Chicago Bears. That dude, pair him, pair him with Jack Jones, a shutdowns, and then have Hobbs at the slot. It's a wrap. Facts. Now, the only reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is. You know, all of the fans, they want to hurry up and get a quarterback, get a quarterback, get a quarterback. Let's fix the team. They ain't worry about the quarterback. I think it's very, I think it's very small. I think it's very small holes right now that need to be filled, especially with what we're, what we're bringing back as of right now. Like I said, the, the main thing that needs to be addressed first and foremost will definitely be our offensive line and keeping our quarterbacks upwards and also being able to run block successfully for our running backs to find the holes and make plays. But um, I I still would not mind right now is the time that we need to try to go big or go home and try to get one of these quarterbacks because this, this quarterback draft class is very, very good compared to previous draft classes over the last few years. Like you see what Bryce Young did or didn't do with Carolina this year. Uh, Anthony Richardson, obviously, he went down with an injury. He'll probably bounce back and lead uh, lead the Colts to somewhat of an over 500 record um, next season. But some of these other quarterbacks are, were very, very questionable with where they were picked in the draft. We got a guy in Aiden O'Connell who we drafted in the fourth round who I said, this guy is presumably going to be a backup at best. And it was no disrespect. It was no shade. It was just from what I saw and of course, he was the one quarterback that stood out in the preseason compared to these other quarterbacks nice. that were drafted in, in front of him. So I think he's another guy that let him develop. And depending on who this next offensive coordinator is, they can help him. And whoever the quarterback's coach is as well, they'll help him fully develop. Because my thing was, and my gripe to this day when it comes to Aiden O'Connell is that McDaniels did not develop the kid that the, way, the way he should have been. You brought in a, a veteran and Brian Hoyer, who you signed to a two-year contract. Dude is like, I think he's 40, over 40 at this point. No disrespect in age, but dude was never it. And you constantly had him as a backup and had Aiden O'Connell as an emergency backup. And that's just the Raider way. If they feel that you're not ready, you're going to be inactive on a week-in, week-out basis. And when AP took over, didn't do too bad. He finished for the season as a starter with a five and five record. But again, you can't put um, everything on him either, especially a kid that wasn't fully developed. All right. So my last thing, I'm gonna let you go. Here go another one, real quick. My bad, Lale. My uh, last one is how you feel about this. Yeah, thirteen takes by in the trenches. How you feel about trading back up until the first round to take the quarterback regardless of the Phoenix or whatever else? So, so you can address that because we need the trenches fixed bad. And I think that we can address a portion of that in free agency and then we can address the rest of it in the draft. And if we're thinking of trying to move up in any way, shape or form in this upcoming draft, I think trying to swap ones and potentially giving probably giving up this year's third or next year's third might do it for some of these teams that were that are within that top within that top 6 to 10 range. I think that that would suffice for them uh to make some type of deal for us moving forward. I like that. Not bad later. Oh, no, no, you're good, man. No, I was just going to say, too, and that way you're not giving away the whole farm on something potentially. Uh, like I say, it, it, it's a crapshoot at best, but sometimes you just get lucky. And I'm just thinking with this new – and you and you guys remember our scout team changed once the old regime left. They revamped our scout team now. So they all they got to do is go find the type talent that they want Easiest job in the world, man. And uh, like I say, give this team another season. I'd say we shock some people this coming season, though. Depend on how they have us crisscrossing the country. Definitely appreciate the call, man. Did he hang up? I think he did. Uh, He had to feed his daughter or something, he said. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, he, Omni, he's 38. He's 
pretty much the same age as me. He's close to 40, so same thing, man. He's been in the league way too long and is not solidified as a starter. And uh, my WWE heads in here. Breaking news: This just came down the. This just came down the pipe. Um, Vince McMahon has resigned as WWE chairman in wake of the sexual misconduct and depraved behavior allegations from former employees. There you go. Vince McMahon is gone. End of an era right there. Yep. Well, he's kind of been out of it for quite some time. Triple H took over uh, for creative and they've done, he's done a really solid job uh, since taking over. So um, there's nothing I can say about that. I think he had some issues about a year, year and a half ago and uh, it's kind of caught back up with him again. As a result, he's leaving the company. It is what it is. Uh, shout out to Q on the 20 salute soldiers move up. Then we control the direction. That's a fact. That is a fact. I'm trying to make sure I'm, I'm caught up with you guys in this chat. Yeah. This man's done. He messed up and everybody's in here by Vince. Um, for those that don't know tomorrow night, uh, we are scheduled to be live. Um, I think it's 8 PM Eastern 5 PM Pacific. I rem- if I remember correctly, we will be doing the watch party for the, 2024 Royal Rumble, my favorite WWE pay-per-view since I was a little kid, so don't miss that. If anybody else wants to, we're going to take one last call before we wrap it up. And we do have a show tomorrow morning. Those on the West Coast, I apologize. It's going to be 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific time. We will be joined by Mitchell Renz of Raiders Chat Sports, so make sure to pull on up to that. Numbers back on the screen. Again, we're going to take one last caller. Three four seven four seven one zero three six one. Still trying to keep up with you guys. It's kind of hard. Like I'm still adjusting to using this app. Uh oh, what did he say? I see most definitely. What did I miss there, Lumpy? I think I missed something on there. I don't know what it is though, because I don't see anything else. Hopefully we have a new OC by Monday. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Like I was kind of thinking that maybe we would have heard something earlier this afternoon. It would have been another really good topic of discussion, but you heard me say before in regards to uh, who's been interviewed, it's been Luke Getze, the former offensive coordinator of the Chicago bears. Um, Cliff Kingsbury has been interviewed as well. Mike Sullivan, the former interim offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's just a matter of time now before they make this final decision. And I think, again, it is late right now. I think that we will hear something after the conclusion of the conference championship games. And it might not be Monday. It may be Tuesday. But obviously, you know, whenever it breaks, I'll throw a short up and then uh, we'll be live eventually afterwards. So we'll see. We should bring in Russ and draft a QB at our spot. Definitely could have had Lamar, but oh well. So there was a report out there from Jeremy Fowler, um, an NFL or an NFC team executive. They're not. They're obviously not going to say who it is. They were going through predictions on moves this coming season for certain teams, and it was reported by this NFC exec that he believes that we are going to have Russell Wilson in the building uh, next season. If that happens, it has to be on a league vet minimum. I don't think we're breaking the bank for somebody uh, for those services right now. But time will tell. New league year, I believe, is March 20th, I believe. Or the tampering period is the 20th and 22nd um, is the official date to sign players. So stay tuned for that. And obviously, just because the offseason's here doesn't mean that I'm going to stop giving you guys news updates, uh, rumors as they break. Shout out to Terry, the president of the Jersey Shore Raider Booster Club, 999 Super. Happy early birthday, Hammer. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's get that 8,000. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Why do people like Russ? Because Russ was something when he was with Seattle. Um, Obviously, not so much, at least in his first year with the Broncos, Last uh, This past season kind of came around towards the end after they had that terrible losing streak to start. I think they went on like a 6-2 and two tear, and then he ultimately got benched for Jared Stidham uh, with Sean Payton pretty much saying that he probably won't be back uh, next season. 
Again, if they release him, it's an $84 million cap hit for the Broncos. They will be on the front of the struggle bus for quite some time. Shout out to DC. Happy birthday, Hammer. Appreciate you. Two more days until my official birthday, but I appreciate the support. Appreciate the love, y'all. 7838. 162 to go, y'all. Spread the word, spread the word, spread the word. Appreciate you, Mark. Keep up the great info. Keep up the great content. <laughs> uh, Thad Lewis has a link to LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. <clears throat> So who's to say that we don't end up with Jaden Daniels? But again, the right it has to be a conscious move. We cannot give up the farm. We can't go and give a king's ransom to one of these other teams ahead of us to make that type of move. It has to be smart because this is going to put us in the right position if we can successfully complete a trade that doesn't break break us and mess up our draft moving forward. Ferris, what's up, Hammer? What's up, Violator the Legend? Y'all already know Orlando. Appreciate you on the happy birthday. Omni, appreciate you on the happy birthday. You see how Denver looked with Russ? We better team. Come on now. There you go. Russ is not a QB worth pursuing any longer. There you go. There, there he goes with his two cents. Appreciate you. Denver pays him $40 million next year. They get a credit for any amount played by another team. Russ should sign LM to stick it to the donkeys. What's LM? What's LM? Shout out to Tanner Jack. <clears throat> Eight touchdowns, zero interceptions last few games. Yeah. O'Connell is better than recycled Russ. Ooh. Wow. Shout out to James Moore. Welcome to the family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for becoming a new member. I don't think I had pinned it. Um, and tomorrow, if we in fact, because I'm still waiting to hear back from Big Mike, but if we do the Royal Rumble um, tomorrow night, we are going to do a giveaway too for people that are members to the channel. Like I said, I got to go back to what I was doing from the jump. We're going to start doing the monthly giveaways for the members. Doesn't matter what tier you're on, your name will be thrown in the wheel, we'll shuffle, it, shuffle it around a little bit, and uh, whoever it lands on will get Jesus, this thing is never going to go away. We'll get some type of, um, oh, league minimum. Okay. Um, we'll get some type of prize, whether it being NFL shop gift card, Raider image gift card, uh, Nike gift card, or maybe some, uh, some Raider nation news today merch, but, uh, yeah, make sure if you guys want to keep the lights on, if you guys want to join, uh, to, for your chance to win, sign up to be a member. Where's my cigar hammer? I, I need I need one, man. I, I think I need one. There you go, baby. I need some. I need some of those. I need some of those. Yeah. You gotta hit hit me up, man. I got you. I'm. I, I absolutely will. I have um. The, the, it's like the perfect setup for me right now. The weather's actually gotten warmer out here. Like the last couple of days, I could have just had the fire pit out with a nice uh, glass of wood and whiskey and a cigar and just. Kick in the backyard. Zen, baby. That's Zen. Shout out to AC on becoming a member. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are we supposed to get Russ? I'm hearing things. I seen a mock draft, and it said we're getting a corner. Again, we still have a lot of time before the start of this new league year, before it could, before it could happen and before it's something that we really need to be concerned about. Right now, as it stands, like playoffs are still here. Super Bowl is another two weeks away. Right. Um, and then right after that, maybe I think it's like two weeks after that is the franchise tag period. So stay tuned. We'll keep you updated. It's been the coldest shit here in upstate New York. Yeah. All of a sudden yesterday, it was like 54 degrees. I'm like, where did this come from? Question for Violator. <clears throat> Violator, which one of your greatest... What was one of your greatest moments as a Raider? Uh, I can name, I'll name like three different ones. The first one was meeting the late great Al Davis and Jim Otto. And that just set everything on course. Uh, Al kind of looked at me like I was a little bit out of my tree. But I, I just smiled back at him like, yeah, you. But Jim Otto got it right off the, right off the bat. Uh, I guess the second biggest 
was going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, as far as fans, you can never really fathom that. You see players doing it, but once, you know, they pull the curtain back and your plaques hanging there, that's kind of like recognition for all that dedication, all the ridicule that you take. And to me, that was an, just an honor as a Raiders fan because I know that's what all of us deal with every day, every day. And I guess the third one so far has been to light the torch at the last home game, which kind of, to me kind of set the tone for us going forward as a team and fan base, what do you call it? Communication. Because there was a disconnect there at first. I'm, I definitely feel like my first experience in Oakland in 2017 – and I do feel like right now, I think we still give it some time, but I think we're about to see the black hole back in full force now with the changing of the guard. But my first experience in Oakland in 2017, beating the hell out of the Jets and Marshawn Lynch dancing on the sideline in the fourth had me incredibly hype. Um, this last time around, most definitely um, that energy inside the stadium and how everybody was just rooting for AP after that game. That that was something that's going to be embedded in me forever. Um, 2022, um, alumni week, meeting Mark Davis, um, meeting Rich Gannon, Bill Romanowski, Tim Brown, Marcus Allen, um, Jim Otto, who I actually was having dinner when I was out there this last time around. He was sitting right across from me with Mrs. Davis, and uh, Tim Hendricks, but I was like, I'm not going over there. Like, they're enjoying their dinner. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Um, Pro Bowl weekend meeting Sandra Douglas Morgan, a sweetheart. Josh Jacobs, of course, because I love JJ. I wanted him here before we drafted him. Um, Mad Max, of course. Uh, I met Beast Mode. Meeting Charles Woodson and the fact that I've met him now three times and he remembers me still like that means a lot to me. Shout out to Woodson. Shout out to Woodson whiskey. Y'all know what it is. Um, I think I have a lot and that that's pretty much all of them right now. But of course, building my relationship with you is definitely something that is incredibly special to me. Like it definitely means the world to me. Um, I think that's it, man. I really think that's it. Shout out to Daniel on the $5. Um, Hammer Violator, what's your reaction on Hamlin winning comeback player of the year over Baker Flack? So I didn't know. Wait, wait, wait. Did he, is it, was it already announced? Or is that, I thought that wasn't until, I thought that wasn't for another couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, I thought. I know he's, I know he's up for it, but honestly, I really didn't see Hamlin play um, that much this year. No disrespect. We know what he went through last year with that cardiac arrest on the field. But with what Flacco did at his age to be called off the street to do what he did for the Browns and get them to the playoffs, I definitely would have given comeback player of the year. Um, I would have given comeback player of the year to Flacco. Definitely would have gotten, would have gotten my vote too if I had we had a boss in it, but. What is this? Hammer, if we get Cliff Kingsbury, what do you think about a Kyler Murray trade? Absolutely not. He's owed way too much money, and he's more concerned about Call of Duty than he is uh, watching film. Absolutely not. Violator, I'm from KC. I'm a Raiders fan from here. I was at the Christmas game, met Patrick Graham. Go Raiders. There you go. What's up, brother? Shout out to Bourbon. What's good, bro? Salute to me. Salute to Violator. All All right, it is Super Bowl week, so it hasn't been done yet. Okay. Yeah, I I saw the list of the candidates, and I saw that Hamlin was on it. But again, I did not see him play. Um, I I think that Flacco should get it. Absolutely, it's a different comeback player of the year award. He won. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, Daniel just said, "Damn, I got clickbaited." Well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't hear about that yet. But. I'm, gonna say, I'm like pretty sure that the honors is like the eighth, if I remember correctly. I think it's February 8th. So, so yeah. yeah, it is what it is. But guys, we've been on for over an hour. Um, no, Mayfield, from what I understand, Mayfield is probably going to get an extension in Tampa. Um, we've been on for over an hour. This was a phenomenal show. We still have 
We have over 220 in the chat right now. If you guys haven't already, do me a favor. Again, we're at 78. Oh, we went up again. 7841. So we're 159 away from 8K. Break them thumbs, hammer that sub, smash the bell to stay up to date with all your Raiders news, rumors, updates, live streams, and reactions. And the house and hammer built by the nation for the nation, Raider Nation News today. Unk, you got any any sites, anywhere they can follow you? You want to plug the cigars? It's all you. Appreciate that, man. Uh let's first things first. All you cigar smokers, there you go. That's your therapy right there. My V57s, just hit me up on Twitter at X, at Violator57, uh, IG, at Mabry Wayne, Facebook, Wayne Mabry57, and what else am I forgetting? Uh, TikTok, at Violator329. So just send me a DM. I'll send you all that info. Get these delicious smokes for yourself. There you go. And, uh, like I say, enjoy football season, man. And spring's right around the corner, so. Well, I can't appreciate you, appreciate you giving me that uh, time to do that shameless plug, man. Come on. Like, there's no way I wouldn't. Come on. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Tanner Jack. Thank you for becoming a new subscriber. And Eminem, I want to say, I'm just going to say Eminem. It probably, it, I probably butchered it, but Eminem. I'm just going to go with that one. Um, shout out to GA on the 199 Super as well. NFL Nation live show with the three thumbs up. I appreciate you, man. This was this was definitely a, another great show. Um, it's great to have you back on here. And again, any anytime you want to come on, chop it up. Look, the off season may be here, but just because the off season's here doesn't mean that I go away. So anytime you want to come back on, you're more than welcome. Really, really appreciate it. This is definitely another part of uh another great birthday present. So thank you so much for jumping on. And again, guys, tomorrow morning, 10 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Eastern time, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Another edition of Vault Talk with Mitchell Renz. And then tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time, we will have coverage, our uh, Royal Rumble watch party, and we will do our member giveaway tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that. Um, continue to stay safe. Most importantly, be kind to one another. COVID is back and on the rise. Remember to wash your hands and your asses. And as always, win, lose, or tie. Raider Nation till I die. And of course, all my New York. Shh. Peace, love, 